Have you ever seen a guy in your gym who's constantly walking around, who's constantly taking breaks, who's not even who's not even working out correctly, right? He does he does sets to like an eight out of ten intensity, then he puts the weight down, and then he does like three minute set pauses. Have you ever seen that guy in your gym? And more importantly, are you that guy? First of all, welcome to the Cayman Experience. I specialize in male mental health and biohacking. And today, I'm going to tell you what three things you are doing in the gym that are costing you time, gains, and energy that you don't need to expand. The first thing we're talking about is, of course, tracking. Everybody knows these people who are in the gym, and they're literally, after every single set, they type in, okay, now I did 12.68 kg on the bicep curl, and I did it for five reps because I'm weak. <laughs> and I went to this kind of intensity, and then they're taking notes for the set. And, and yeah, yeah, it felt kind of good. But on the third rep, I had a I had a weird pain in my arm. That's why I stopped at the fifth one. Right? It hurt a little bit. And they track everything. They track their meals. They track how many sets or reps they do. They probably all also like track how long they last in bed, right? And they're tracking everything in their life. They have an app for everything. You name it, they got an app for it. Fucking how deep is my voice today? How long did I meditate? They track everything. They're living a worried life. Every single thing has to be entered in an Excel table or some stupid shit. And every single thing has to be accounted for. Oh yeah, how did how did I move the weight on the fourth rep? And what they do is they are over, they're they're, they're over planning, right? They're not doing anything. They're not taking action. Because the real thing you need to do in the gym isn't planning. It's not thinking about how you're gonna move the weight. Yes, you can do that. Sure, if you have time in your day, if you're taking like public transport to the gym, and but when you're like in the public transport, that then you can think about what you're gonna do in the workout. Then you can do that. But instead of that, these people they go to the gym and then they think about what they will do, and they think more than they do. And what I call this is parallelization through analyzation. They're analyzing so much that they're literally paralyzed in what they do. When you challenge these people to a PR, they say, oh no, I'll, I'll peak in three weeks. And I'm like, what the fuck, you will peak in what? And they say, oh yeah, in three weeks, I'll have the most strength in the month. And I'm like, what the fuck? Is that going to matter so much? And you challenge these people. You say, man, I, I will do more weight than you on this. And they're like, literally, yeah, man, maybe, maybe you'll do more weight, but I look better. I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Because you don't do work. So the biggest thing that's costing you time, energy, and also money, because most of these apps cost a shit amount of money. I've seen one app, it's like it's like 20 bucks a month for just the tracking. They just track what you do and they tell you nothing. They'll just track it and then they tell you, oh, today you had a great workout compared to yesterday's workout. And I'm like, you don't need to tell me this. I know when a workout is great. The weird thing is that these people who put lit, who put in like three hours more a day at the bottom line, bottom line, three hours more in cooking meals up, in tracking their stuff, in tracking their meals, because that's the next thing. They track their meals for some reason. They track everything, right? They put in three more hours than I do and they don't manage to get more results. They don't get more results. They stay at the same level for a year and they'll be just fine. They won't make the progress I make because they chose to put in more time and less actual work. You gotta see the core habit of what you want to reach. If you want to reach more mindfulness and the habit that brings the most yield that you work 20% of the time for and get 80% of the results, as meditation in that re in that matter and in making gains it's not about what you eat or how much you do it's about the intensity it's about the core it's about the core thing did do you think any bodybuilder tracked precisely what he was doing 
Yes, maybe those ultra scientific ones. Sure, but are you a bodybuilder? Are you going on stage next month? If you are, I'm sorry, okay? If you are, I'm sorry, but you're probably some some 15 year old skinny boy who's going to the gym and whose trainer told him, yeah, you have to track everything because of course, as a trainer, you're held accountable for what your customers do and everything. Whilst I will stand here in the fucking forest and tell you, don't do anything of that. Just work hard in the gym. Why do I do this? Because I actually want you to make results. I make money by getting your results. Because if you like my videos because you get results from it, then you click on the next one and the next one and the next one. And one day you'll maybe even buy a coaching from me. And then I make money off of your progress. Your coach and all these supplement firm, firms and these apps that make you pay for them, they make money off of you not making progress. Because if you make progress, if you're big enough, do you think you're gonna you're gonna watch that app anymore if someone told you okay you can do this without that app if you found out okay you don't need that app anymore you'll quit it because at some point you will know what to do so they don't want you to get results because if you get results if you get what you want then you're gonna stop using the app then you're gonna delete the thing because now you know what you do right I want to bring that this back this narrative of the 70s gym, of those gyms where they were in there just screaming and all just giving each other advice and, they're, and they were just in there all chads, all hydrosocial. Fucking everybody's in there screaming, sweating. Imagine, imagine the 70s gym with the steel barbells, with the steel weights. Everything's just hammering around. Everybody's screaming and everybody's making progress. Isn't that beautiful? Everybody's making progress. And these days, no one wants you to make progress because gyms and all these things, they only work because of the losers. They don't work because of the people who are, who are successful. Because if you lift enough weight, you're gonna switch to a gym that has heavier weights. So they want you to stay at a level where you think you're progressing, but you're not actually progressing where you think, oh, I earned all my progress to this app. And if I went off of it, it, I wouldn't be able to do it. They don't want you to be confident. They don't want you to think, I got this. They want you to trust them. I want you to trust yourself. If I had a conversation with you and you said, oh, how many, how many sets, how many reps do I have to do? I would tell you, what do you think? Because I want you to grow. I don't want me to grow. I don't want you to be dependent off of me. I don't want you to, to say, oh, if I didn't have caveman, he, I would be broken. No, I want you to grow confident in yourself because you are the main character in this story. I'm just the guy on YouTube in the forest that's telling you what to do. But you are the one who does it. You are the main character. You are the, the, the narrative of this story. This is why you need to grow and not me. Not your trust in me. Not your trust in anyone except God. You need to trust yourself. You need to be confident. It can't be the case for so many young men to sit at home with their little app, with their little trackers, and just say, oh, well, I... I, I tried everything today and I'm only good because of this app. Whilst I and you hopefully in the future are sitting at home and we're saying, I'm the best in the world because of me, because of my hard work, because of my plan, not this app's plan, not this app's plan, not my fitness pills fucking tracker. I am successful because I did the work not this app. And even if you think, oh yeah, I, I'm not like that, just delete it. It's unnecessary space on your phone. Just delete it. You don't need it. You don't need it. So that's the first thing. Don't track anything. Just work out like a fucking psychopath in the gym. Just work harder. This is why you don't make gains. Next time when you're working out, you go to the gym and you only do one set. One set to total failure and not 
to this failure where you can't lift the weight up anymore, but to that failure where you don't want to lift it up again. You don't go to the failure of, oh my God, I can't get it up again because it's too heavy weight. You, my friend, are gonna go to the level of failure where you say, I want to quit. I don't wanna fucking do this. It's too hard, it's too painful. Please, do this the next time you're in the gym and you will know what you are really capable of. Because most guys don't know this and they will never know this because they don't test themselves to that level. They don't have the balls to take it that far. So be bold. Go in the gym. Train hard as fuck. Train so hard and think about all the times someone has called you skinny, someone has called you natty. Think about all these times and imagine the opposite happening. And then don't just imagine it, but then live it. Because the hard work is going to allow you to live it. Not the supplement companies, not your fucking expensive designer protein. Not that. Your hard work. Because without hard work, any nutrition, any tracking app, any stat, any statistic is not going to be worth shit. If you can't look in the mirror and be proud of yourself. And all these people will come up, oh, body dysmorphia is real. I, I'm, I have body dysmorphia. No, you, you don't have body dysmorphia. You're just small. That's why you have body dysmorphia. I never have body dysmorphia. Never. Because I'm big. I choose to have this mental strength because of, because of my training. I choose to eliminate the pain up here with the pain in my body. I choose this. And every single day I make this decision. Every single day I make the decision. Do I want to suffer when I look in the mirror? Or do I want to suffer in the gym? When I'm on the when I'm on the weights, make this decision today for yourself. So we're now going to talk about something I've talked about dozens of times on this channel, and it's music. And I've always given this advice: don't listen to music. But since I see many people just say, "Oh, I can't not listen to music," and since I see the value of music, I say that you can stick to one album. First, make, make sure that you could theoretically train without music and that you're, not, that you're not connected to your headphones because that's what you do. You're dependent off of them. I just need a card to log into the gym and some, some sports clothes, some gym clothes, and I can go in there, have a hard workout, go out. I don't need a fucking protein drink I don't even need a water bottle. I can, just, I can just drink from the tab like this. I don't need anything for the gym. I just need my clothes and maybe, because that's all music and those extra entertainment machines are. That's all it is. That's all pre-workout is. That's all it is. It's just a level of dopamine added on top of what you already should have. And at some point, it's like, it's like with TRT. At some point, the natural source of dopamine will be gone and you will be fully dependent off of your pre-workout, off of your music, off of your lifting straps, off of your fancy gym clothes, off of all these things because, of, because without it, you will not be shit. Without your fancy clothes, what will you be? You will be just like Iron Man without a suit. Whilst I took the time and the effort and the discipline needed to develop this space in my head where I'm happy regardless of what I bring and where headphones and music and all these fancy equipment things are just things on top of my workout that I could do, but I don't have to. I prove this on the regular to myself and you can too. What you should do is every single week you go to the gym and once a week you will not use headphones to make sure that you don't need them and to start this process, you need to take it extra extreme and don't use headphones for a full week. Yes, you've heard me correctly. Don't use headphones for one week. 
You will not be cured after this or anything. You can't cure yourself from two, three, four years of fucking your mental health up with this shit and of ruining, ruining your dependence and your happiness during a workout with one week of extreme fasting. You have to develop this throughout your whole life. Of course, I could tell you, stop going to the gym without headphones. And that's, of course, the optimal path. But most people won't have the strength to do this. So what you do, you do this fast. And once every week, you're going to just take off your headphones or just train without headphones. Something hard. Not just, oh, I'll train back and arms. Of course, you can't train back and arms without your headphones because that's the, most, that's the best workout you'll have in your week. And of course, the thing that's the most fun, you don't need anything for. The goal here is not to make the most fun thing a little bit less fun, but to make the leg workout work without headphones. So I recommend doing this sort of fast day on your leg day. Even though it's hard and everything, do it on your leg day. And for the rest of the days, we of course are not going to overstimulate our brains. We're going to pick one album for the whole workout. So every single day, you can pick one album that you're going to listen music from. And from that album, you're going to listen music to. I like to listen to the game soundtrack of Doom Eternal while I train arms and chest and all these kind of ego lifter sort of muscle groups. And you can do this too. So pick one album per day in your, in your, in your workout. And then you can listen from that album, whatever the, whatever the fuck you want. And otherwise, once a week without headphones on the hardest day, that doesn't have to be that doesn't have to be leg day. For me, it would be back day. That would be the the hardest day in the week because I just fucking hate to train back, and that's why I would not listen to music during my back day. This is not physical discomfort. This is just mental discomfort. What is the day you would like to just eliminate? What's the day you'd like to skip? And that day you train without headphones, without music. Have this discipline. Work today. The last thing we'll only slightly tap into because I've already talked about this and it's, of course, set pauses. You don't need set pauses. I pause for 30 seconds after every single set, which is basically enough time to drink a sip of water, to refocus my brain, to take a couple of mindful breaths, to kind of ground myself in the moment. And then I go back to training because everything after that is a waste of time. You have to adapt your body to doing hard things. Otherwise, your body is not going to know how to do it. Think about it. If, if you put yourself in a battle every single day, but you only battle with half a heart, aren't you only going to make half the gains? Would you, wouldn't you like to just take half the set, the, the, the set pause off? And most people do three minutes of set pause, three sets. And I just think, where is the battle? Where's the fun? When are you having fun in the gym? Because just working hard and working with high intensity, high volume, it's just fun for me. I just love it. I love this shit. I just love it and no one can take this from me because you could tell me my knees will break, my elbows will break, my body will break down. I don't care. I do not care. Because I love this shit so much that I'm literally willing to destroy my body in this process. I am willing to do this. Not because of steroids, I don't take steroids, I don't take anything. Right? Not because of this, but because I just work so hard. And people will say, oh, this, this is not good for your body, this is not... Did, 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 did. But those are the same people who talk about fucking balance. Look at my body, look at how I started. Does this look like fucking balance to you? Do you think I was talking about fucking balance when I was getting bullied for being fat in my class? Do you think I was, I was thinking about, oh, how can I have a balanced day when I was getting downright fucking beaten up in my class for being the fat guy? Do you think I was thinking about fucking balance when my girlfriend broke up with me? Do you think I was about... Do you, what the fuck is in your mind? What's wrong with you? Think of yourself as a board. I've, I've said this a million times and people still don't fucking get it. Imagine yourself as a board and a ball below it. If you don't have a disbalance in one direction, you're not going to move anywhere. You're not going to move anywhere. 
What you will do if you follow this modern day bullshit Western advice is you're going to put the weight in the middle so it's balanced and, you, and you're not having a disbalance toward anything because that, that, that's bad for your mental health. What I will do is I will put a 500 pound dumbbell on one end and hope for the best. This is what I will do and this is what every successful man will tell you. Disbalance your life in one direction and you can't have fucking disbalance if you're thinking about a three minute rep set pause. What we're today talking about is in a sense, don't be a pussy in the gym. Don't be a bitch if you're training. Because the training part of your day should be the part where you're the most masculine, most focused guy on there. And people are thinking about, oh, let, let me make this balanced. The rest of your day is balanced. You have enough pause later in the day. You can rest later. And you will la rest later. Those people who have three minute set pause will complain by the end of the year that they've not make, that, that, that they didn't make any gains. And they will tell me I take steroids. It's those people. Yes, if I trained like you, then I'd have to take steroids to look like this. Of course. If I trained like human garbage, then I would need to take steroids to look like this. But lucky for me, I don't take, I don't, I don't train like you. I don't take steroids. I don't train like garbage. This is why I don't look like garbage. I don't take set pauses. I don't know this shit. The time I started with home workouts and these fucking high, high intensity interval trainings, that's what they were called. I had 20 seconds of set pause and that's what prevailed through all this time of working out. I will never take these fucking three minute set pauses on fucking on, on purpose because it's a waste of time and I cannot waste time and feel good doing it. There's too much balance in your day. You're too balanced. You have been soft for too long. Now you have to get rough. You have to get rough with it. Unless you want to waste another fucking year of your life. And call another man. Who's just more successful. And who works harder than you. And fucking steroid taking. Some system abusing guy. Some people say. Don't hate the player. Hate the game. Don't hate the game. Hate the player. And I will tell you. If you work like this. You will have to hate the game. And the player. To make your fucking failure anywhere acceptable. Stop going down this path. It will fucking ruin your mental health. Because the worst feeling in the world. And lucky for me I don't know this feeling. Because I train like hell. I love God but I train like hell. Every single day. But anyway the Worst feeling is when you train all day long, when you do everything for a good physique and you're looking in the mirror and you look like fucking garbage. And then there's some fucking piece of shit on YouTube who's telling you he's doing nothing. He's doing none of that shit. He's not taking fucking creatine or BCAAs or fucking pre-workout or protein powder. And he has a physique like Hercules. And you still look like garbage. You have to act today to change this. You have to make this decision every single day to ignore the Western modern day bullshit advice that all YouTubers will give you because they don't want to get fined. If you fucking break your arm during a workout, of course, I'm not responsible. Of course. But even if I would break my arm every single day to have a good body, every single day, if it gets me results, I'll break my arm. I don't care. I love this. I will train legs. <laughs> you can't stop me. This is the cool thing about this. This is the cool thing about this mindset that you need to get into and that I teach on this channel. So if you like this video, it would be a pleasure for me if you could take your time out of your day because you obviously have too much because you're fucking taking three minute set pauses, which you hopefully will quit now. And just take the time of your, out of your day, right? What did you like out of the video? Did you like the background? I know it's a little bit dark. I'm filming a little bit late today. But did you like anything about this video? If yes, it will be a great support to this project and it will help me to stay motivated on this journey and to keep supplying high quality information to you that will help you have a better life. 
Have a nice day and be mindful.